no way people like look at this and they call it like how the hell is this off how the hell is this famous off maybe we'll just crack some little joke he'll do that little smile and you know rians will smile back at him and you know everyone Whoa, will be okay, happy go in a weird direction <laughs> <laughs> are nrg gonna be good that's the question isn't it <laughs> <laughs> Episode 32 of Cosmic Divide Blast Off! Hello, TMV. My name is Elevated. Your name is TMV. We're here with some great VCT <laughs> <Blast> news. <off. laughs> We're blasting off. We're going, going hard on episode 32. Hard in the paint. 32, much like LeBron James. Actually, no, he was 23. Now he's number six. Two times three equals six. Anyway, um, VCT's started. There was no break. There's there's no breaks. No in breaks. This train. Ain't no rest for the wicked. Exactly. And your money don't grow evil. on trees. Yeah. Uh yeah, it was uh it does feel like the main takeaway, and obviously only Pacific has started uh, as we're recording this. Um and but, China. Don't forget about China. Oh and China and China. Sorry. Caught. Caught. <laughs> um, but like watching obviously like this guy's already know, out mo- of wolves, he doesn't care. <laughs> The <laughs> don't get me started on wolves <laughs> um watching obviously like the the best teams in the world play you know and we're seeing like you know and I, I there's been a lot of chirping you know there's been a lot of chirping from from people about oh this year is not as good as last year blah 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 because blah, they only remember the good teams and they only really remember eg playing fracture and that's all they can remember um but you know obviously seeing the best teams play and then you come to some of these games and you are just like Oh, I just haven't seen someone like, you know, uh, maybe, other than Leviathan, I haven't seen someone, you know, do something like, oh yeah, that was shit. Well, you know, that was re- <laughs> <strays. This is laughs> <good>. <laughs> But you know what I mean? Just like like, oh, that's not very good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you just have to like dial it back and be oh, like, oh, no, forget Gen- G- Team Heretics, Gen G, forget, forget, forget. Yep. And then you have to like bring yourself back into like Zeta Division. That's a word yeah. Into like oh you... <laughs> Zeta Division. Oh yeah, they're just you know not using their ults. Yeah, you know that they had a gecko ult from round six that they didn't use in the half. Oh oh yeah, that. Um. Anyway, we'll get into all that. But uh, yeah, how are you, Elevate? How are you? How are things going? Uh, they're going well. I've just been very very busy. I have many hats, many many things to do, much content. Uh, many meetings. I've been up since 4 a.m. this morning, uh, so I'm going to need a second cup of coffee soon. It's only uh, 9.45 a.m., and I feel like I've already gotten a full day's work in. So, Yeah, I mean, I, ha- I have been there. I remember waking up from Tokyo at 4 a.m. and, you know, streaming for like eight hours, and I did, you know, that is a full day. Yes. <laughs> but then it's like, and then it's the like midday. The hard work like... of sitting in my room watching <laughs> Valorant. But then it's like midday, and it's like, I actually quite enjoyed it because yeah. like it's midday and it's like, well, my work is kind of done today, but it's like middle of the day and it's like, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's a different yeah. feeling. Anyway, I, I like I mean, it because then you get to go to the gym and you like can kind of cap it off and then you can kind of relax in the afternoon a lot of the time. It's yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, it's like a nice like. So, yeah, it, working at 4 a.m. That's the good life right it there. Is. Turns out who, who, who thought who would have thought? Old anyway. people were on to something with this. Weird <laughs> yeah. <early laughs> yeah those, those oldies, they yeah. got to figure it out. Yeah. Um, anyway, what we're going to do, uh, on this episode is obviously we recapped Master Shanghai last time. We talked about quite a bit of the roster moves as well coming into stage two. So we're basically just going to do a full, like, obviously the Pacific games of some, you know, have happened already this week. So we'll talk about them. And then we're just going to look ahead to EMEA and America's, you know, talk about predictions of what will probably happen, all of that stuff. Um, and yeah, let's just dive in. We're going to start with Pacific. Which makes sense because uh, they've actually played some games. And let's kick things off with the Master Shanghai winners, Genji. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Genji won Master Shanghai, and they played just that what still five days so later. Weird to me. <laughs> really? They, they still, win? yeah, they did. Uh, they they won, and they played just a couple days later against uh, T1, who did actually go to Shanghai. I know it feels like an age ago, but T1 were at that tournament. They actually won a map thirteen one as well. Uh, which is kind of crazy yeah. to think about. Um, yeah, they did. But they actually had a new team. There were new players playing. And the first thing I want to say is I kind of feel bad for Carpe. Um, just because 
when the kind of stacks to T1 thing was announced, they said it was going to be a six man roster type stuff. No, it's not. But it, <laughs> but it, but it just wasn't. It just wasn't because they played five players, you know, for three maps. Um, I played the same five, and Carpe was not in that five. And you know what is funny about this game that Genji beat T1? Is T1 should have won this game. Yes. Like, T1 definitely should have won this game. I mean, they were up 12 well, 8 yeah. on map one. And yep. it went to overtime in Genji one, and then they destroyed the map two. Um, Sunset, of course, like yeah, okay, Genji with a better team on Sunset, and kind of like somewhat came into their own, I think, by map three. Um, but I'm assuming you you watched this game back. Did you have any thoughts? Yeah, I did. Um, I thought a couple things. First of all, the walkout from Genji with the yes. trophy was a banger uh, that <laughs> yes. was great i love that gotta love a little bit of showmanship um and then as far as the game goes i liked actually kind of what i saw from both sides i i think mm. a lot of people kind of look at the teams that went to shanghai especially the ones that, that went deep as like you know they're going to be lucky to have a decent split too because they just haven't had time to change everybody's copying their comps there's so much footage of them I kind of disagree, especially for a team like Gen G, because number one, their map pool is so broad. Number two, I think they're a team that's not really like locked into their setup so much. They kind of have like a general idea of how they want to approach every round, but then the the majority of their round is sort of fluid depending on what information they're getting and and like what you know whether they get the first blood, then how they translate that into map pressure, that type of stuff. Um. So I feel like if you're if you're just a good team at this point in the season, most of the time you're just gonna continue to do relatively well because I'm I'm gonna keep saying it, anti stratting is massively overrated by commentators and, and people who react to stuff. There anti stratting can have some big effects, but if your overall game plan is solid and you don't rely on specifically this set play, this specific setup, like you're gonna be able to handle most things that are thrown at you. And so I thought that Gen G kind of just showed that and, the, and they kind of just showed like their championship mentality, you know, like at no point in this game, did they look like they were flustered or pressured? You know, you mentioned them being down, coming back on split. Uh, that's just one of those things. It's like, this is a team that will win an event and T1 is not a team that will win an event, at least at their current status. <laughs> uh, that being said, I do want to say some, some nice words about T1 because I think that- with stacks in the lineup. I mean, I've been very vocal. I have nothing against Carpe, but I've been very vocal about the fact that I think that mechanically he's been the worst player on this team. Like since the inception of the team, uh, he started to have a little bit more firepower once he gave the IGL role over to Excurate. But I think it's just always been the case where he just seems like he's, you know, a step behind uh, a lot of the other players that have been playing Valorant since the very beginning. He, it, People might not remember that he was kind of like a late convert from, from Overwatch over. Um, so he's like, you know, about a year and a half to two years behind everybody else who started playing in the beta. One of those players being Stax, who's been one of the best initiator players in the world since the very beginning. Um, and so we got to see a bit of that today, or not today, but in this match. We got to see the, the Stax of old. He's not calling anymore. He's just focusing on his crosshair. He's using his utility for himself and teammates. And he looked really, really good individually. Uh, and I think it kind of gave T1 space a little bit to 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 brawl a little bit more. It, this this game was really to me it came down to like the individual player moments. I mean, Caron hmm. had an unbelievable map three, and and but everybody had like hero moments. Saya had some really really good moments on the chamber. Uh, Stax obviously had some really good moments. Izu had some great moments for T1. But yep. then, yeah, really, when it when it mattered, it was just like Gen G. You just realize that everybody on Gen G's team is extremely good, and this team is just going to be extremely good until like they have some massive falling out or the meta changes, probably because all of their players can step up when when the time calls for it. And if you have five players that can do that, it's just very hard to beat. Yeah, uh, definitely. I think Gen G, the star of this game. <laughs> It's kind of a bit weird because I actually thought that, particularly on like the early part of Split, I really thought that they, like, like I was expecting, oh, they're gonna probably be a bit tired. They're gonna make some mental mistakes, you know, stuff like that. But really, it was more like they just 
they just didn't shoot very well at the start. Yeah, you know, like they they kind of struggled shooting early on, and then like they kind of grew into that a, a, a bit as uh, the the map went on, and then you know obviously they end up winning the series. Um, and by sunset, it kind of looked like you know they were kind of back. You know, yeah. like they were kind of we're back to what we actually are. Um, I did think it was weird that Genji, by the way, like T1 have shown you that they're only good at one map all year. Why the hell did you pick that map? <laughs> like, I know it's one of, meant to be one of your better maps, but why are you picking the only map that T1 are like good at? <laughs> right. Uh, that didn't make much sense to me, and you paid the price for it for Genji. Um, going forward, Genji, I will just say one thing that could nerf them, of course, is the map pool changes. Because as you say, they have seven good maps right now. Yeah. But two of them are changing, you know, or by the time we get to like towards champs, two of them will change. So obviously keeping seven maps to be good, you know, when two of them are changing, that might bit it prove a bit of a challenge to them, but uh we'll we'll have to see. Uh for T1, I, I did want to talk about T1 a bit here because I do think that they did look better, I thought, overall. I think that they in general had you know like it looked like they were cohesive and knew what they were doing, and, and they could have easily won this game. Uh, but I do think that they have a problem. They've moved roles around, right? So they've got Itsu now is seemingly playing duelist. Mm -hmm. Sire is now playing this kind of sentinel-ish role. He mm -hmm. played Chamber on both Split and Lotus, and then he played Sage um, on Sunset. And, you know, his impact on, on the Chamber on Lotus especially was just, you know, crazy. He, he carried them on, mm -hmm. on Lotus. Like, he was insane. Um, on that map, on the chamber. And it did make me think, like, you know, Sunset is another map where if you really wanted to, you could play chamber, right? Like, if, if you really wanted to, you probably could. It's a map where it's possible. But I was, and then I'm thinking, like, oh, well, Breeze is leaving the map pool, and that's, like, one of the maps where, you know, you probably wouldn't play chamber, you know, next week. Mm -hmm. it, it does make me wonder, like, one, obviously, we don't, we didn't see a jet map in this, so we don't know. I would assume Sai is probably still playing jet. I think so, um, yeah. And we'll have to see what they do with Itsu there. Like, you know, what what does it look like when they're on ascent, right? Like, is Rossi moving to Killjoy? Is Extra moving to Killjoy? Is Itsu back on smoke? You know, there's like there's some questions there for sure about T1, but I did think like they might have a bit of a problem on some of these maps. Like, where I thought that Saya on the Sage, just you know, in map three, just after coming off destroying them on Lotus, it wasn't that he was bad. He just was like. You know, you just didn't notice him. He was just like not really in the. He was just not really involved. You know, he was just there. And I think, like, if if I'm looking at T1 and their win conditions, I'm looking at like Lotus. Okay, Saya can carry us two maps, right? And Itsu at times, as you were saying, like, you know, his duelist is is pretty good. You know, and and he shows that. So, I I just think it's an interesting dilemma for them of like, you know, on some of these maps, like it. If I'm playing against T1, I'm looking at Sunset and I'm thinking, well, yeah, give me the map where Sai is on Sage and he's not going to have nearly as big of an impact. And, you know, then we can kind of control them from there. Right. Um, that's what I would think about T1. But I think that they were better than they were um, at Shanghai. And so I, I'm pretty, I'm looking pretty positive for T1 going forward. Speaking yeah, of I, another T, oh, go on. Just one final thought. I think my main takeaway from this series was that by next year there's going to be three very good korean teams in pacific mm. because i feel like t1 would be insane not to just make sure that saya and stack stay here 100 yeah. percent. and yeah. if they want to go full korean next year and keep itsu grab a couple of other good korean prospects from the tier 2 scene and as, as we know like the game is gaining popularity there it's gaining momentum especially with a gen g win especially i mean shit if if t1 Gen G and DRX all make champs. Like Korean Valorant is going to yeah explode. in Seoul yeah. yeah it's going to yeah, explode. It's going to be big. So yeah, I, I think a pretty decent chance that happens. I yeah. think as well. I I think there's yeah. a very good chance that all three Korean teams are extremely good next year. Mm. Yeah, there you go. Well, it, it was bound to happen at some point. And yeah, then, <laughs> yeah. And was. then soon China will take over as well. And then eh, it'll be we'll just be we'll just be <laughs> we'll just be like league. You know, it'll be China and Korea just battling back and forth. Uh, anyway, speaking of another team who went to Shanghai, who uh, did not win the tournament, though, uh, Paper Rex. Uh, Paper Rex kind of destroyed Talon, really, in, in this yeah. game. Uh, it, it was kind of just a, a whooping, a good old-fashioned whooping from Paper Rex, which, again, like, if we're talking, it, it does make me think, right? Like, Paper Rex, 
are maybe akin to like EDG in China, and that EDG just need to be good, but they can't get the practice to be just good. But Paper X maybe don't get the enough practice from Pacific to win tournaments. You know, they just because they can play against Talon, who are are a decent Pacific team. Mm-hmm. You know that they were they're they're meant to be at least a pretty decent Pacific team, and they just it was never really close. No. You know, it was a stomp from start to finish, basically, and it and 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 Paper X I think showed moments of like oh they're playing really you know better than they did obviously when they got a, eliminated by hundred thieves like you know in moments, but there was still quite a few moments where I'm thinking. Like, if you did that against a better team, though, you would just die and you'd lose again. <laughs> you know, yep. like, like exactly the same thing that would that will happen against better teams where, you know, you don't win that fight and then you lose the round because of that, right? There's still that in there. And to me, like, if you're Paper X and you're coming off the tournament loss that you just did, like, you have to come into Pacific and realize, like, this is our best chance to practice. We need to take this like this is you know the grand final or you know like lower final of a champs right every game needs to be that we need to treat our opponents like that even if they aren't that good because when that moment comes you're going to revert back to this and you're going to get punished again and then everyone's going to be screaming oh why can't they ever learn you know to to not do this and it's because well these are the games that they get where they just stomp people and it doesn't matter you know they can overheat in in three rounds in a row it doesn't matter because they're so far ahead and they'll win anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you're really probably on to something there with the the practice because I mean, I have yet to see a uh, maybe one or two teams have been able to play somewhat slow against Paper X. Those teams being like kind of DRX somewhat last year. I don't know if the new version of DRX will be able to do this. And Zeta Division, but Zeta Division have never been of the same caliber of team as mm. Paper X. So it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But Paper X really struggles against the teams that stop their tempo. And yeah. there's basically no Pacific team that stops tempo. They just play to the tempo of whatever team they're playing against, you know? Yeah. Especially Talon. I mean, Talon yeah. are not the team to stop Paper X. No. And so, you know, there there was a couple of moments where you could see that Talon had like watched the Paper X bods and they like perfectly stood outside of like a KO thing and like anti them in this specific way. But unless you can literally change the pace at which Paper X plays the game, you cannot beat this team. And since nobody can do that, they just continue to get away with it. And like I, I agree. I think that all of the players, Devi in particular, something both looked sharper. Jing also, I think they looked sharper than they mm. did at Shanghai. Yeah. But also, there were definitely the moments where I was like, bro, they are just making such big mistakes and just shooting their way out of stuff constantly right now in these rounds. And it's just, it's one of the things where I just don't know. Like, I, I don't really know what the solution is because it's not like the teams in China play slow either. So how are they supposed to do this? It's very difficult. Yeah, I think it has to just come from internally. Like, you just yeah. have to really knuckle down on it internally and realize that if you want to win a, a tournament. And look, I, I, I think actually they have, uh, on some of their maps, you know, I think that they, if they're going to play like that, they need to, like, I'm looking at their Icebox comp, but again, they destroyed Talon on Icebox because they lost that to 100 Thieves, um, you know, had to get eliminated from Shanghai. I'm looking at that comp and I'm like, well, if you want to play, you know, that style, like don't play a standard comp. you know yeah yeah don't play a standard comp play a comp that suits that style like yeah it's not going to be meta but that might help you in the short term anyway because people aren't going to know what you're going to do and, you know just play the map in a very different style you know play double duelist with Reyna and, and whatever right and just yeah. run about and go crazy like yeah why not right like and maybe they will you know I, I could definitely see like you know I mean, that would be hilarious, and I kind of hope that they do it in a, just for the fun of it one week. You know, play Icebox with the new ISO and Reyna. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, just play both of them and just see what happens. I think that would be funny. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I made this super long video talking about their problems. I don't know if you mm-hmm. if you saw it. I know you yeah, made I a did. video about it. No, you were. Um, but my whole thesis in that was basically, like, this team has to play even more into their play style, which is that, like... Yeah. 
if they're planting the spike in the first five seconds of every round because nobody can stop their initial hit, then they need to just fully tailor their comp around that and like just mm. really lean into it. Even if that like massively Im imbalances how you can play the game, like they're already doing that with how they play the game anyway. So you might as yeah, well, so you might as well just lean into it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Seems that we agree. Um, but yeah, they, they, they beat down on talent. Let's move to DRX. Another team, another hopeful team. They won a map 13-0. This is our second 13-0 of the year. Both happen in Pacific. Um, and they beat Zeta Division 2-1. I mean, funnily enough, this happened in the other game as well. They win map 1 13-0. They then lose map 2. Um, but then they managed to destroy Zeta as well on Breeze 13-4. So let, let's talk about both teams here. Let's start with that DRX. Obviously, it was a positive start. They're playing Clove on Icebox where they won 13-0. Mako is IGLing apparently. You know, Buzz went crazy on map one. Uh, and they yeah. managed to win and it looked convincing on Breeze as well. Although Breeze is leading the map pools so being good at Breeze. You can, doesn't matter really. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but overall thoughts on DRX, uh, you know, look pretty good overall. Um, yeah, I mean, I was surprised to learn that Mako is going to be the IGL, yeah. but that seemed crazy to me just because he doesn't really seem like that vocal of a player. But um, I think the real test will be next week when they play Paper X, because mm. I think beating the Zeta Division team is like, I mean, I'm going to be honest, I'm just so disappointed in Zeta Division this year. I, I feel like I feel like they they made some roster moves to like give themselves more firepower. But their strats are just bad. Like, just they're just straight up not good. And so, you know, I don't know whether that's, like, the team, the coaching staff, or whatever. But, like, they straight up, like, did not understand how to play Icebox, which is unacceptable. Like, it's, it's in the map pool. It's going to be in the map pool. They're playing a comp that is, like, meant to fight, right? They've got a KO and a Gecko and an Omen. Like, these are, these are characters that are fighting a lot of the time and i guess they were like trying to play retake on a or something but like every round it was just them like slowly walking backwards like until everybody in their entire team is in spawn on b and a your ex just like plants the spike and then i don't know you're just playing retake every round even if your comp is reasonably good at retake just the fact that the spike gets planted lowers your win rate in that round to like 30% or 35%. So and it was every round. Like they didn't adjust at all. It was just, all right, I guess we have three people at A and they're going to walk back into our spawn and let them plant the spike. Now we put those three people at B, they're going to walk back into spawn and let them plant the spike. It was just really terrible. And it made me be like, I don't know what they've been working on. Like they got eliminated early. They've had a lot of time and somehow they've gotten worse. I don't understand. Yeah. I mean, just, I, some of this, I mean, you talked about the changes that they made to get more firepower. I, mean, I don't want to, you know, I don't like calling people out too much, but like Euron minus twenty one this series, Hiroron minus twenty three, you know, like that's not that's not great. You know, in this series overall, I mean, I just looked at this. This is incredible. So in this series, they lost thirteen zero and thirteen four, yeah, and they won map two thirteen eleven. So as close as it could be on the map that they won, they won the first kills to first deaths in this series. How unbelievable is that? I mean, depth's a beast. <laughs> they are plus two in overall first kills to first death in a series where on two of the maps they won a combined four rounds. Yeah, that's nuts. Also, Laz went one in 13 on one map and still managed to finish up minus seven overall for three maps, which is crazy. Yeah. He was minus 12 on one map. Oh, boy. Where do they go from yeah. here? I mean, can this team Nowhere. get better? I mean, it can't get worse. <laughs> I mean, you can't really get worse than 13 0. Uh, I mean, I honestly have no idea. Like, they're just, it's it's over. Like, yeah. it's just, it's just over. There's just no way. I mean, at the, at some of the bottom of Pacific is quite, is quite bad. So they might, you know, finish overall like better than some of those teams. But what? They've won, they won two games and it's against Global and Bleed. I think I would probably pick Detonation over Zeta Division at this point. Nah, uh, DFM still do some uh, some stuff. I mean, some of, like DFM, I feel a bit sorry for because they they seem to have like ideas, but like other than May, they they that's just there's just a lot of rounds 
I remember literally calling out on stream earlier today. There was a round where RQ were going A on Icebox, and like DFM knew they were going A, and everyone was there. Literally, all ten players were there, and I was like, "Well, if you can't win a round, like," and the time was starting to get low as well. I was like, "Well, if you can't win this round, you know, when all five of you were here, then you're just not going to ever win, are you?" And of course, they lost. <laughs> and then as soon as I say it, like four of them die. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh yeah, yeah so but, that's the fm from but yeah zeta aren't much better if let's any talk better. about drx instead <laughs> okay drx i mean it's crazy that they lost a map honestly it's crazy to win 13-0 and 13-4 on two maps and and manage to lose the other one yeah um i've kind of blanked it from my mind this sunset to be honest uh but yeah i, I remember being frustrated with drx in this game oh yes of course yeah it looked like drx on their attack side like early on they lost pistol they then won four of the next five and it was like okay drx they're just gonna roll them again they've got a good idea and then they just kept uh, like they they kept it uh, maybe this is just maco igl inexperience as well I, I kept thinking like oh you just don't have the right read here or you're making it a bit too obvious of what you're doing like you know your next move always seemed like a bit like you know what's the obvious play and look they lost 13 11 they lost both pistols as well so it's not like a disaster um and i think overall you know, I mean, Buzz had a really good game uh, in this game. And I think uh, that's always, I think, been like a, a a thing for DRX is that Buzz, whilst being very good, I think, you know, can be a bit up and down mm -hmm. at times. And I do feel like DRX maybe as a whole will kind of go where Buzz goes. Like if Buzz is really playing well, they'll tend to do pretty well. And then as soon as he has like little dips and stuff, like, it does become, I think, a bit harder for him, and maybe even more so now. You know, now that yep. they don't like have experience with them either. Right, and Mako maybe will have a dip in performance as well. Yeah, he's IGLing, so it is kind of heavily on Buzz at this point, unless somebody else can step up. So yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's all I have to say about DRX. Really, but, I think well, uh, interesting next week against Paper X, as you say. Good comeback from Flashback. I mean, he's been out mm. of the action for a while. Comes back, goes plus 21, plays Clove, KO, and Astra. Three fairly different characters. And so that, that's good to see. I'm glad he's healthy and doing well. Um, and yeah, it, I think it'll just be interesting to see how this team develops because I, I guess the more I think about it, I could see some crazy inconsistency, but I could also just see them like be pretty consistently good. Well, I mean, yeah, that game next week against PaperX will be yeah. kind of a big showcase for where they are in their development, I guess. Uh, let's move on to a team that won two games this week against pretty weaker opposition, let's say that. Uh, team Secret won both against Bleed and Global Esports this week. Uh, they made some big changes as well. They had one of the worst attack sides I've seen in a while on Ascent. They were up 10-2 against Bleed and managed to lose 13-10. Yeah. But they lost that, 11 rounds in a row. Awful. <laughs> yes. Awful. The attack sides on that map were very bad. Yeah. Very, very, very bad. Um, but they still bounced back to win in the other two maps. And then they beat Global earlier today as well. A game where again, Global, I, I mean again, Team Secret <laughs> looked like they might do it again, where they won 11 one on their sunset defense side and then it started getting a bit close and ended 13-8 and for a while it was like oh my god this actually might might happen um some of their attack sides are a bit like what are we doing mm -hmm. uh, well, like what are you doing like that doesn't make any sense or like the time like that's kind of the weirder part i think for both the ascent and some of the sunset that i saw today it was just like some of the timing of like your execs, like you know, just you stuff that you would think like a tier one pro team should be like almost automatic. You know, you've ran through this, you know where your util is meant to land, you know, like, you know, your timings of various stuff of what you're meant to do. Some of it was just like, why are you like droning after your jet is already in and like you know like way after and your jet's already dead and you're droning and one guy is running in afterwards but the other three aren't like what like like ranked like stuff right stuff that when you're the duelist in ranked you're like where the hell are you <laughs> like where are you <laughs> yeah uh that's the kind of stuff that's happening a lot for team secret um especially in that ascent game but i, I, I 
honestly, I didn't come away that co- even though they won both games and like you know people will be like, oh, they won both games, that looks good. For me, it's still it very much looks like oh, Team Secret, they're gonna be that same team that makes it to playoffs and then like falls just before you know the game to make it to the tournament. They'll lose that game and they won't make it. Like that's to me still where Team Secret are. Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably going to be the case until they have some like massive shakeup. To be honest, like I don't know, uh, they changed their coach, they changed a couple of players. Wild um, Oreo looks really good though. Yes, so I was, that is a positive. I Him, was, Envy, and Jeremy are are like three really good players. Yeah, that that was one thing I was gonna say is the there's two things I do know for sure about Secret. Number one, Jeremy is one of the best duelists in Pacific. He's very mm-hmm. very good. Number two, Wild Oreo looks like a very good prospect. And other than that, I have no idea how this team's going to finish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and, that, and that is the thing. I think with those three players, like they're always going to be at least decent in Pacific because they have good players. Um, and yeah. yeah, we'll see. But I, I do think that will be the case. Okay, let's move on to the pickums then. So let's just quickly pick. Should, Obviously, should we give any too- thoughts on Bleed or GE? <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't need to. Don't. If you want to add it in, I mean, those two teams play each other, so you can you can add in any thoughts you want as we go through some of the pickums if you want to. So uh, week right. two Pacific pickums. Let's just quickly run through some of these games. Sure. Uh, Talon RRQ. I mean, we didn't talk about RRQ. Uh, they also won their game today. Uh, still look like a team that has some good potential, but also makes some crazy mistakes. Uh, in my opinion, so this is this could be a bit of a weird one between two teams. That oh, this could be a very weird one. Who who who'd you pick, Talon or RQ? That's kind of a close one. Yeah, I mean, I think I again, I didn't have time to watch the RQ game. I watched like the first little bit of it. I don't really feel like Monyet does anything to make this team like change their identity, and their identity has always just been kind of like got a bunch of like pretty talented players that kind of just like run around and do stuff and out shoot people a lot and some of their ideas are a little bit decent but also they play some pretty messy rounds <laughs> pretty regularly right mm-hmm. um i would probably give the edge to talon slightly just because i think they have a bit more structure i think they have a bit of a better like game plan yeah. usually for teams and you can't really judge them against Paper X because Paper X is just like their daddy in Pacific. <laughs> like specifically, that team versus that team is never going to go well for Talon. So, yeah, I, I I can agree with that. Uh, so yeah, I probably pick Talon. Paper X versus DRX, big game, game of the week. Who would you pick? To me, this is a pretty easy Paper X. I don't know how you feel. Okay. Tell, can you sell me on DRX or what do you think? Mm, no i can't say you on drx just yet uh, on the only thing i'd say is unless buzz has like a life game maybe but otherwise i still would say paper regs to me uh, because this, I, this is one of those games where buzz tries to do too much has like yeah. 25 first deaths across a three map series maybe and then or it might even be a 2-0 to be honest uh and and mako gets kind of massively exposed as not being an experienced igl yeah i could see that uh, global versus bleed. Okay, you you wanted to to I don't know flame these teams or whatever. Like I, <laughs> you I, just didn't I, give me anything, so I'm just. I, I, I don't know. know what do you want me to say. They're not very good. Uh, well, but who's less good? Because who's gonna win? <laughs> Ble- I haven't watched global play, so I don't know. I watched bleed play, and you're correct. They weren't very good on attack. Their defense was okay. Yeah. Uh, the crazy guy iteration is slightly better they're maybe slightly yeah. more on the same page yeah. i still think they have role issues because i don't think that darion is supposed to be their entry duelist but what can you do yeah what well, can you well build a better roster i guess probably i mean what you could you could have done that i suppose i would probably just pick global <laughs> even though i haven't watched them play just because i feel like bleed will be likely to continue to feed on mm. attack and therefore Man, that's such a tough call it's such a tough goal i maybe polvi will look really good because he just gets to opt bleed as they walk in with no utility or something like that uh, <laughs> yeah 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 global yeah global went awful awful like i just can't get that ascent out of my head where it's like bashing my head against the wall <laughs> i think it'll be close though i think this one will be close this is a real tough one to call 
Uh, uh, let's oh, fucking hell the next game as well. Oh I'm my goodness, DFM, this, bro. I'm this is DFM. gonna be a fucking <laughs> rough week of Pacific. Is that are those two games on the same day? That they will be, yeah. aren't they? Global bleed, DFM Zeta. Holy mud! Oh my goodness! I mean, surely you're gonna go play soccer or something like that, and not watch. The oh game. my <laughs> goodness! Yeah, I'll find any excuse. Oh, I'm gonna tear my own eyes out. I'm going for a dentist appointment back to back <laughs> <laughs> sorry i've got three dentist appointments to go to um oh my god who the hell do i pick in that you're picking dfm yeah go on sell me uh, on zeta division sell me oh on zeta no division. i'm not selling you on anything <laughs> sell me on zeta division oh we're you all must. losers in this one you valorant must. is the loser <laughs> oh Oh, I don't want. Oh, you gotta uh, sell move me on. on. Division. DRX <laughs> versus RRQ. I don't even want to talk about that game. DRX versus RRQ. I'm happy to go DRX. The, they should be. At the very the kind least, of game, the you DRX. didn't turn the Zeta Division logo upside down, so you have that. Yeah, game. true. True. <laughs> I don't even want to look at you, Zeta, right now. I think the Japanese fans would agree, though, to be fair. They can't be happy. Anyway, DRX, they'll be RRQ. Yeah, I mean, the narrative in me says, okay, they lose Paper X, Maka loses confidence, everybody no, loses confidence, they're no, young, RRQ has lots of firepower. You didn't watch RRQ today. That's true. All right, I'll they, they just make too many mistakes. They just overheat in too many situations. DRX is just... qualified for playoffs already. Yes. Which is That bizarre. is true. That is true. But, like, what do you want to do? Like, be good. Don't be bad. Like... And, and getting first seed still matters, so there's still plenty to play for. Fair. Uh, so, good. Um, and then you got Team Secret versus T1, the final game here for Pacific. Ooh, a close one. 2 0 I, versus an 0 1 team, yeah. I feel good about T1, though. I, I, feel, I feel good about their direction and overall what I saw from them uh, against Gen G that I would feel good good enough about picking them here but team secret could win this game yeah team secret are always kind of that spoiler team i think i would probably pick t1 here personally just because i agree i thought they looked quite good against literally the best team in the world <laughs> so <laughs> you know what probably that'll carry over they shouldn't be too down so i'll, I'll take t1 okay there lock you go in. lock it in that is Pacific. Uh, in fact, we have one more little thing because I thought this would be fun to do sure. uh, at this point, which is we're going to predict four champs teams. Now, somewhere, uh, uh, this sounds more like an elevated job, really, uh, to just keep track of this, keep, take note of uh, the teams we're about to say. Who uh, pick four names? Let's go. Let's go. You, you'll say a name, I'll say a name. And we'll pick off four teams to make it two champs from okay. Pacific. Give me a second. I need to pull up the the actual overall standings because okay. yeah, it doesn't show it on VLR. Because VLR have messed up big yeah. time. Which I'm is kind quick. of so funny because at this moment, Gen G are just barely the sixth team as far as record goes because they, they finished with a three and three. Gen G should make it on champs points anyway if they didn't because they have. They won it, kickoff and they won uh, unless Paper and Shanghai. X doesn't make it also because Paper yeah, X is but come on. Champs points. Come on, let's be real. That's fair. Be real. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, oh man, who's my fourth team? You you say a name. All right, I'll start easy. Gen G Esports. I will join you and say Gen G Esports. Wait, don't you have to say another name? Oh, you want me to say someone different? Are we are we each picking four? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, second team. Z <laughs> Paper X. <laughs> <Blah. laughs> I too will say Paper Rex. Okay. Uh, third team. Ooh, do I believe in DRX? Is the question. Third team, I'm gonna say T1. Oh, okay. I'm gonna save the hard decision for that last. I, I actually, it's gonna be tough because T1 has to make. Ooh, can they even make playoffs? Wait a second. 
this combined schedule, this combined record thing is is really throwing me off. Like, how likely is it for them to even make playoffs? If they win all of their games, they can finish with a five and five record. I think, right? How many games that, do they have uh, left? They have one, yeah. two, three. three. Yeah, so they can finish games. maximum five and five record. Holy, so they might not even make it. That's yeah. crazy. So even if they are like the third best team, they might just not make it because their split one was bad. Um, yeah, this gets complicated then because like, I mean, Secret are almost a lock to make playoffs. They have to win like one game and they'll be in playoffs basically. And Talon needs to win probably a game maybe two games hmm okay well my third team is going to be drx then because i don't know who this fourth team is going to be <laughs> i'm going to join you with drx okay so we both have i mean uh, most people i'm sure would have paper exchange with drx the fourth team this is where it does get hard so go on throw out a name give me a name I got. I gotta look at the schedule for Talon and, and ROQ. Like, how likely is it for them to win a couple? <laughs> well, Talon of games? and ROQ play each other next. Talon have got DFM and Zeta. They got a Talon have got a pretty easy schedule, I'd say. Okay. Team Secret have got T1. Uh, then they get a week off, and then they've got uh, Gen G. That's Team Secret. Yeah. Okay. What about? Rex Regan. RRQ play Talon and DRX this week, then they play Zeta and Paper Rex. Ooh, tough. Oh boy. I'm going to say T1. It might be a kind okay, of a long shot for them to make playoffs, but if they make playoffs, then I think they will they will make it to champs. Okay, and my fourth team is going to be but no. It's going to be Talon Esports. Okay, I think that's fair. That's going to be my fourth. You do have to remember champs points come into this, which you would assume one of those first three, if any of those three didn't make it, they would be top on champs points. Um, if one of them didn't make it. Right. Um, yeah, that's a good point. But then if those, three, if those three were the three, who knows who will be top on champs points after that? I don't even... What happens if there's a tie? I don't even know. Uh, probably goes on the head to head, I guess. Of yeah, whoever it's played. probably At which point, unlikely are you meant that to... T1 can make it, honestly, just based off of that. But whatever. You gotta believe. You gotta believe. Whatever. Okay, that's Pacific. Let's talk about a better region. The not Whoa. the best region. Whoa. Probably not. E well, is it better? Some of the bad Pacific teams are really bad, so it might be better overall. But but Pacific what? have the winners. They're they're clearly True. the best. True. You gotta have the winners. We got second. Uh, EMEA. So there's some things to talk about in EMEA. The big news coming out of EMEA is Fnatic will not have Leo. Uh, did they give a time window on this? They just said split too. So it could be the entire split. Yeah. Unclear. So uh, unclear exactly when uh, that will be the case. And they added in Hero, who was playing for SMB in Turkey. Uh, although they're not Turkish, they're Dutch, actually. So uh, you would assume that speaking English shouldn't be too big of a problem because most Dutch people speak English. You know, it's basically the same language, just with Dutch people. It's as if you've got like a really big tongue, uh, is how I've heard Dutch described. That it's just uh, English, a bit of German, and just as if you've got a, a tongue that's too big for your mouth. Oh, sorry, tongue. How do you Americans say tongue? Tongue. You say tongue. Like T U N G basically would be the pronunciation phonetically. Okay, that's not good. See, you'll see here in certain parts of the UK, we say tongue, like me. Posher places, I think, say tongue. Not for me. Anyway, Fnatic have Leo, no Leo. How cooked are they? Uh, it's not good. I mean, <laughs> he's, he's an insanely good player. He was probably their best player while dealing with health issues. Um, you know, Durka's back, maybe. Durka and Alpha are gonna have to massively step up. Um Hero, a couple of things about him. Mainly a duelist player so far in his VLR career. Like his his officials has played a total of three games of Sova. He's played a decent amount of breach in Sky. 
uh, three games of fade. So it's super unclear what the roles are going to look like. I mean, maybe he just goes flex. Chronicle goes in. I mean, Chronicle, just the perennial. Yeah. I'll just play whatever. <laughs> I could play everything, yeah. Uh, maybe Don't that's what they end up having to do. Um, I know every lineup. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but yeah, it, it's, I mean, first of all, let me just start with, I hope that Leo is doing okay. I hope he recovers quickly. Um, you know, they didn't give any sort of like details about what's going on. We know that he looked quite sick several times. I don't know if it's like a chronic thing or whether it's several illnesses kind of piling up or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's yeah. uh it's sad because he's an insane player and he's very fun to watch. Uh, but as far as Fnatic goes, I mean, they're in a pretty good spot points wise. They they're at the top points wise. Mm. Um and their record in stage one was uh, three and three. three Everyone three. was three and three. Right. But they do have the um the win. They have the points. Yeah. yeah, they have the win in stage one. So they should probably. Well, I mean, it's going to be tough. It, it's going to be very tough. Uh, and dude, I I don't know. Like we thought they were back for a minute there, and then at Shanghai they were just kind of. Yeah. Back to their yeah. initial self. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I it's impossible for me to get a read on this team right now. Yeah, uh, this there's a world where, like, you know, because Fnatic are struggling, uh, you know, it, it's a weird situation for someone to come in, you know. But if Hero, like, obviously, I don't know anything about them really, but you know, if they had like a big personality and you know they were really like a if they were a vibes guy type deal. That actually could really benefit, I think, Fnatic. Mm -hmm. Because, and, and maybe they'll benefit just in general because now they have, like, maybe there's just less pressure. You know, the, 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 like, people will just expect less of them. Like, if they lose a game, it's not like the end of the world. You know, whereas they if they expect more from themselves is the question. So it's like, we got to step mm, up for. Yeah, maybe. But I do think there's a world where, you know, like, people won't be as harsh on Fnatic if things aren't going great at, like, at the start, certainly. Um, because you know there's a very obvious clear reason why that might be the case so that it, it might help them in some instances i do think the roles though like you know especially you know you think haven's coming back in and and like you know leo sova on haven would have been you know like crazy good and, and Durka goes know. back to sova that's the answer <laughs> it's like his third yeah. most played agent of all time is sova <laughs> that is just funny to think about isn't it it's just funny to think about <laughs> Durka would play so um yeah so we'll, we'll see i don't really know i i they're in a weird spot as you say though like if they can just win a couple games like and and you know hopefully they get some help of like the good teams qualify for champs you know then they still could easily make it off points uh yeah. because they won that split too so yeah uh th that that's probably their best chance but you know we'll, we'll have to see maybe this guy is the next you know i don't know Maybe he's the next Woot. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, you there know? was a tweet from Neil Zeno saying the sky's the truth, and we've seen what yeah. talent he's scouted over at Heretic, so... Yeah. You know? So yeah, maybe he's just really good, and then, you know, they'll they'll just be good still. Who knows? We'll have to see. Uh, the other... T I know, there's a couple of teams I want to talk about here in EMEA. Obviously, yeah. we've, we've talked about, like, Foot and Fnatic and Heretics because they went to Shanghai, but another team that I'm, I'm kind of interested to know like where your vibes are is Navi because Navi haven't made an international tournament this year. Yeah. They've changed their coach. Oh yeah. What? I forgot that. Yeah. Eric they've changed their coach. What? Like what, what first let's start with this. What would happen if Navi don't make champs? What if they don't make any international tournaments? What's going to happen? I mean, the, the team 100% breaks apart at that point. Uh, this is this is a team that... But who I, would you keep? You know what I mean? Like, well, would, you wouldn't get rid of all five, surely. I don't know. I mean, the... Okay, so this is one of those situations, I think, where... You're getting rid of Xiao? <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me finish. This is one of the situations where you have a team that mm -hmm. has won a Masters. It's literally the same team that won a Masters. They 
you know, tried something different that wasn't that different last year with CNED, and then it didn't work out. Then they bring back the piece that was missing, artists. And I mean, to be perfectly honest, they've gotten a little unlucky this year. <laughs> if we're being real, they keep losing to Heretics when it matters the most. And Heretics, single limb. <laughs> and Heretics is just the best team in their region, unequivocally. So yes, it's unfortunate that that they, they've only lost one other match this entire season. That was randomly to BBL, but that didn't really matter that much. It's mm. just they keep losing to Heretics in single elimination. And it's just like, what are you going to do? Uh, they probably... <laughs> that is tough, isn't it? You know? That is tough. Um, but yeah, I mean, certainly if they don't make champs, I think this team 100% breaks apart. And and maybe they keep a player, maybe two players. Uh, but there's, there's no way that this team would survive uh, a disappointment like that. Okay, my next question to you is going to be very simple then. Will they make champs? Or like what how good is that chance? I'll take you through that game. They play two games in kind of this like extended week. So what's it an extended week? No, they just play two games this week. Play against Team Heretics first up, which might be a benefit, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um Get it out and then the they way. play foot. Holy, they play heretics and foot in the same week. Mm, That's pretty rough. No. It might be the best week to do it, but it's still pretty rough to go back to back. They play them a, a week apart. Oh, oh wait, no, no, why, never, why mind, never mind. No, never mind. It's it's two days, two days, two days apart. Yeah, you're there right. you go. You're right. Heretics and then foot two days apart. Foot don't have a game. Oh no, foot do also have a game before that. Oh, what are we doing in the EMEA? <laughs> schedule's weird. Schedule's weird. <laughs> yeah, schedule schedule's very weird here in the EMEA. So yeah, heretics, Navi, and then Navi foot. That's pretty rough. After that, though, they play Giants, Koi, Gentlemates. So after that. It softens up greatly. And they're already in a pretty good spot. As you said, they only lost one game in the regular season before. So, yeah. like, record-wise, they're in a pretty good spot. You would assume, like... Oh, I mean, even if they lost both games this week, as long as you beat Giants, Koi, Gentlemates, you know, you'll definitely make playoffs. Right? You'll definitely be in there with a chance um, to make it. So, what... How likely is it that Navi do make champs, then? <sighs> I could see them getting rolled by Heretics. I'm gonna be honest, just because Heretics they you come are back. down on Navi. Well, it's just Heretics. They come back. They get Mini Moo back. Like the Heretics is just perpetually in a honeymoon cycle where it's just like, yeah, it's my best <laughs> yeah, friend. Let's in. run it down. <laughs> like it's the, it's what they've been doing the entire year. And uh, just imagine, like Heretics plays Navi again. They get rolled by Heretics. Navi's like, what? the fuck we can't beat these stupid zoomers what's going on with our team is that, is that the secret do you just have like people say like oh six man roster never works is that the secret it's not a six man roster you just keep whenever you like need a kind of breath of fresh air it's just like you're back for a month now welcome back and you know you just like keep rolling that through the season maybe, maybe that is the secret maybe my, my main Good worry vibes. for navi is that this is a team that in the past won a lot of games based off of their individual firepower like Shao, Sugetsu, even artists on like the opping role i mean zipan on the raise like these guys would fry other teams and i just don't think that they can do that anymore I, and i think they're kind of still stuck in that way like i see a lot and of stagnate a bit i see a lot of times where it's like instead of Sugetsu playing with the team he's like playing for that clutch because he believes that he can just like win the 1v2 a lot of the time and he just isn't like he's still really good and his aim is nasty, but uh, I could definitely see them losing to heretics and then losing to foot and then they're losing confidence in themselves. And I'm going to be honest, Giants isn't that bad. I know their record was very hmm. bad, but they're not that bad of a team like this could be it could get out of hand very quickly for this Navi team if they don't come out relatively strong and the two teams that they play at the very beginning are going to be nightmares, <laughs> in my opinion, for them to play. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't really disagree. And especially with what you said about the start, I was just thinking about, like, you know, like, yeah, you've already got rid of your coach. So if you if you, if you you don't make a tournament again, yeah, and even if you make it and don't do, like, if, if they made champs but didn't get out of groups, I even think even then, yeah, there would be 
probably change is coming because it's like you've changed your coach at this point like what else is there to change you know yeah. like <laughs> players are gonna are gonna have to have to go you would have thought and I, I i definitely agree and i think you see the same with Fnatic, right last year the navi and Fnatic, the emea league let's just be real there was a lot of players in there the weren't that should you know weren't actually the fifth but 50 best players in the they're NBA. no longer in the league is what you're trying to say yeah you yeah. know a, a lot of people got there was a lot of turnover in EMEA. Yeah. Yeah. a lot of the rosters built last year just weren't very good yeah um and now as you say there are multiple teams you know like you know like heretics like foot like calming core you know who can keep up with the main wise you know that's no problem and then, and then you start to see like some of these things like where you might have got away with it aim wise last year like you can't anymore. And I do think you could argue that Fnatic and Navi, you know, maybe have just stagnated from last year. They haven't got better at the game mm -hmm. from where they were at the end of last year, um, or, or certainly not you know good enough. Uh, clearly, as we've seen from kind of some of the results this year, and so that does like like you say though they have been unlucky <laughs> you yeah. know like like we could be saying something very different you know like if they don't play against heretics in those two in those two single limb games you know maybe maybe they're going to tournaments you know and, it, and it's like there is no problem what do you mean you know doom bros probably still has a job like so it is a weird one with navi i i do i, I do still think there's a good chance that they make champs personally because i think again like yeah they have lost a couple of games to heretics and not made it but other than kind of getting fucked by the schedule i do think overall they've been good i wouldn't say they've been great but i think they've been good good they've been good enough to where i think they will finish in the top four of emea mm -hmm. and, and now for champs that's all you need to do right and so i do think they'll still probably be good enough but there is a world where especially if they do like if they lost both games this week you never know right maybe yeah. at that point like the blame game starts to come in you know and the vibes are really bad because it's like this isn't working anymore yeah you i know? mean it'll be so interesting to see what type of like comps and stuff they come out with too because uh i was just looking at latex who's the he was the assistant coach yeah. is now the head coach um and he did work with giants before as both an assistant coach and a head coach but then before that he was just a player so Maybe this is just full on like Angel has a hundred percent control of everything now, and he's just kind of like you know helping yeah. them do the antis and stuff. Like Otis that. is know. the only veto. <laughs> yeah, there might there may be no breaks on this train at this point. It might it might be like Clove, ISO, Breach, Phoenix, Rays, and like Sagetsu is like no, nah, I'm still playing Cipher on every map. I don't care what you tell me to play. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? We might see some weird stuff from Navi. Yeah, I mean, I hope so. I'm yeah. all for it. I'm all for it. Uh, let's talk about another team, though, that is kind of in a similar, maybe not a similar, like, trajectory because it's a newer team, but in that kind of, like, uncertain who knows what's going to happen, mm -hmm. right? And that's Calming Court. Yeah. Uh, because they're a weird team. Like, they have, like, you know, some pretty like noticeable like obvious problems i think mm -hmm. um that if they can solve they'll be really 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 good but they're kind of like really big problems that take a while to solve and i'm the question is at this point like have they had long enough from not making master shanghai has that been enough time to where they can fix those problems you know and can you know then you know make a a strong run and you know make champs and all of that um because like here in EMEA, it is it is going to be really competitive. I think at the top, obviously you've got Heretics. You know, Fnatic will still trying to be in there with Leo or without. Um, you know, Foot are going to be in there. Comic or Navi. You know, maybe even someone someone else will rise up. Who knows? You know, BBL yeah. looked good for a second there. Uh, it's going to be really competitive. So, tell me what who? Let me answer this. Who's more likely to make champs, Comic or Navi? So, I mean, okay. What I really <laughs> like about Carmine Core, I'm a politician answer. I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go <laughs> tangent for a second. What I really like about Carmine Core's schedule in Split Two yeah. is that it's going to give us the perfect measure of this team because they play BBL, mm. who is a dangerous team, but they should beat. 
Then they play Fnatic, who's like a weakened giant that they probably should beat, maybe. Mm -hmm. If if they yep. do beat them, then we know what Carmen Core is, which is that they're a very good yep. team. If they lose to Fnatic, then they get to kind of go again against a Team Liquid, which is a scary team, I think. I think Team Liquid is, is a team. A challenge? It's, yeah, it's, it's a good challenge. They've been consistently looking better over the course of the season. We don't know how good they are. It's kind of hard to tell. And then they finish up the season with Vitality, which is another one of those teams which is like, yeah. they could be insane or they could be kind of mediocre. There's like, there's no easy games there. Like right. you're gonna, like if they're gonna make it, they're gonna earn their spot because yeah. they're gonna beat decent teams. Yeah, so if they go like three and one, I think their their chances of going to champs are really good this year. Just like, not only because it makes them for sure into playoffs, but I think at that point, I would feel really good about this team. If they go two and two, it's like, mm, I don't know. This team probably can beat some good teams. And depending on the day, maybe they can beat the really good teams. But do they have the consistency to go to champs? Probably going to be rough. Um, I think I would probably probably say Navi has a better road to champs than Carmen Core does. But part of me believes in Carmen Core a little bit more. Okay, that makes sense. I can get on board with that. It could get a little weird because Comic Core, of course, got the extra points from winning EMEA yeah, or yeah. Madrid. But then, like, Fnatic, you know, might have more points than them if they don't make it. Like, it could get a bit weird between those two in terms of the points. Yeah. Um, and, the, and the one little thing I wanted to ask you as well is other than Navi, what team is the most likely? To make it to champs from EMEA that has not been in an international tournament so far this year. Don't say Navi. Um, that's Poland? not been an international tournament. So you can't say Comico, you can't say Heretics, you can't yeah, say Foot Fanatic. Probably Liquid. Oh, he's back. He's back. Probably Liquid. He loves them. He loves Team Liquid. <laughs> Let me go find my jersey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not probably Liquid. Um, I just not Vitality or BBL. I, I think I'm kind of out on Vitality, honestly. Like the whole. Okay. I think a lot of people are. Just the whole like, all right, coach, assistant coach gone. Um, you know, maybe Safe is taking over the team again. Who knows? Like, what's what's going on here? Um. BBL, I was never really sold on. Like, okay. So my, my choice is really between Vitality and Liquid. I, I'm going to be honest. If Giants had one more win, I might pick Giants. Ooh, you little Giants fan. Look at him go. But I think, No, I think that's fair. I think, I think it's fair. probably Liquid. Yeah. Okay. But I, okay. I, I don't... I think my... We'll, we'll get to the, the champ spreads, so we'll, we'll get to yeah. the four teams later. But yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so let's uh, let's now do our pickums for week one Any dark of horses, EMEA. The dark horse themselves, Team Liquid. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, first game. This happens tomorrow. Foot Esports versus Koi. We don't need to spend too much on this one. Foot are we, gonna win, right? Do we? Foot are inconsistent. Koi are on the rise. Are Koi on the rise? No, I must have missed that. We're picking. Are Koi on the rise? We're picking Foot. Okay. The next one though, this oh this one's kind of interesting. BBL versus Fnatic. A, a weakened Fnatic versus BBL. Hmm. <laughs> I'll tell you what I think. I think Forza BBL. I've got I'm picking BBL. You're picking BBL. Huh. I'll go with Fnatic. I'll, I'll, I'll take the boring boo, route. boring boring boo boring okay probably the game of the week oh, team heretics coming off a devastating second place was it devastating Navi. they got second place with a fucking stand-in it's still devastating because you you could have yeah. won you got yeah. the map five you could have won <laughs> yeah true like if they got stumped yeah fair enough but they didn't but anyway, Team Heretics versus Navi. Tough one. Oh man, who would I pick in this? 
I kind of I'm kind of with you what you said earlier though about team heretics like the many boo the vibes they'll come back many boo will just crack some little joke he'll do that little smile and you know Rians will smile back at him and you know everyone Whoa, will be okay. happy. This is going a weird direction. <laughs> <laughs> The music comes on. You know, yeah. Wu and Benji are doing their handshake. (laughs) Boo's just sitting there oblivious. You know, he he doesn't care. I'm going I'm going to go with the heretics. Okay, we're both going to go heretics. We're both just in. We we, we just like heretics. They're our likable team. What I really Uh, should do is I should run all these through the system. See what the map is. Oh, the system. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Yes. Uh... Okay, next one. Speaking of two teams that we just talked about, Team Vitality versus Team Liquid. I'm going to guess you have to say Liquid to win this. Uh, Otherwise, yeah. what you said before kind of doesn't make sense. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, I think it's going to be like a like safe revenge game, but it's going to be the opposite. Yeah. They're going to be like, bet you, were, bet you wish you were over here. Like, didn't have to change our coach. We're just going to keep on trucking, getting better. See you later, bro. I'm gonna say that the safe revenge game does happen, and he goes fucking crazy, and and Vitality win. Okay, that's fair. Giant X versus Gentlemates. Oh my goodness! I, I have you seen the new Gentlemates logo? I mean, I'm looking at. We should have. We should have. We should have opened with this. I'm looking at it. <laughs> let me let me go to their actual page. I I have the the share screen up right now, so people can actually see. Yeah. Oh my god! What the hell is that? <laughs> we should have opened with this. Is this on their it's main still website shit. too now? It's still shit. It's still <laughs> awful. Is it? It's better because I don't think it could have been worse. <laughs> but like in a weird way, it's like it's better, but like less interesting. And so maybe it is worse because now it's just like bad and boring. Whereas before it was like hideous, but in a way, you know, kind of interesting to look at because it's hideous. They still only have the old merch up on the website, so. Mm. You know, it was like what? What? Who's the fucking guy who just painted the squares? What's oh. he called? Is it Roth something? I don't know. Artist who painted squares. Hold it's on. Just M. I mean, are they M eighty? Are they trying to rebrand as M eighty but in Europe? Because this literally, it's the same colors as M eighty. Rothko now, it just says M eight. Like right, they're, Rothko. They're literally gentlemen M eighty but French and. <laughs> With a worse logo. <laughs> right, Rothko. Google Rothko if you want. Get get some Rothko paintings up there. All right, uh, one moment. R O T H K O. You'll know. You'll know them, right? They're they're pretty famous. Um, you know, just like the squares. Oh, I mean, these are better than the. You know, yeah, of just like the logo. squares. Well, this is what I mean, right? Like the last one, like, you know, people like look at this and they call it like, how the hell is this art? How the hell is this famous art? But then you kind of like, you know, like once you start like thinking about it, you're like, well, it is kind of like interesting in a way. And then you got come back to like, no, that is shit. What the, how the fuck is that art? You know, like that's what the old Gentlemates logo was, right? It was like one of these paintings where it's yeah. like, ah, oh, you know, there's layers to it. This new one is just like boring and shit. It like, looks really like nothing. clip art from like, Microsoft <laughs> yes, Word. Yes. Yes, it does. Anyway, I'm going to pick Giants. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to pick Giants too. Let's get out of here before the French fans. I mean, we should say Cadavera is now playing for Gentlemates. They made one yes. change. I think Whalers was the one. I mean, they still have six yes. players on the roster, but Cadavera, probably slightly better player in terms of just individual mechanics. Will it hmm. make them better? I don't know. Are they still going to run double duelist with a lot of Phoenix? Probably. Um, let's go Giants. Okay, Navi versus Foot, another big game. Uh, my theory on this is that Team Heretics are just going to be Navi's kryptonite, mm. and that Navi will win this game, but they just never can beat Heretics. Heretics have just got their number. Yeah, I kind of feel the same. I feel like I feel like Foot is just not a good matchup for Navi. Even if Navi are not necessarily playing their best, I still think like stylistically they're just better than foot and and like hmm. foot will just allow navi's players to have good games so i think i'm gonna go with navi here as well and then finally we have bbl versus common core now common core do have the advantage here bbl will have played a game earlier in the week that they haven't um and i think with that information common core will be able to come up with a good plan and beat bbl 
Do you agree? Yeah, I mean, I'm picking Carmen Core here all day. I think even if even if it was just one map or one match this week for BBL, uh, I think still I would prefer okay. Carmen Core. Okay, those are our picks, and then one last thing to do here in EMEA, and that is our champions predictions. Now you went first last time, so I'll go first this time with uh, my four. We'll go one at a time again. I will start with Team Heretics. I will also go with Team Heretics. Okay, we're already getting tough. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> this is where it gets difficult already. I'm going to say... I'm going to say Navi. Wow, right out of the gate. You're going to go with mm-hmm. a controversial one. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to go Navi. Okay. Um... You know what? I'll just get mine out of the way. I'm going to take Team Liquid. Oh! <laughs> no way! No way you picked Team Liquid. You, you, Look at you this. yelled so loud that you just muted yourself for the last 30 seconds. Oh. <laughs> You're back, though. The enemies to love is trope. Oh, my God. I don't even want to pick them, but I just... There's some weird thing in my brain that says Team Liquid. Okay. I mean, I was not expecting that name to come out. I'm not saying they're um, gonna make it in the second spot, but I'm yeah, no, that's game. fine. That's fine. Okay, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Fnatic. I'll join you. I think Fnatic will somehow manage to make it. Like thinking back when they had Kamek standing in, they still managed to be a very good team. They're they're a team that has enough like organizational structure where they seem to be able to plug and play players, even though they are losing somebody as valuable as Leo. Maybe he comes back early. Even if he doesn't, they probably do enough to make it in the top four, plus they have the point advantage. So, yeah. And finally, I'm going to say foot esports. I knew you were going to go there. You're such a foot <laughs> fan. You just love foot so much. Um, I am tempted to join you with foot. I, I would love to see CNED back at champs. Um, but I'm going to go with the young guns. I think, I think the year is, uh, okay. sort of highlighting the, the young, newly hungry teams. I'm going to take Carmen core. I thought you were going to say Koi. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Carmen core is so most, uh, VCL teams over Koi. So you've got heretics. Liquid, liquid, fanatic, and calming core. Calming core. Okay. Good Tell luck. me this. Tell Go me on. this. What of the new agents and new patch, new meta, are Navi gonna play? I mean, they have an, a potential neon player in Zipan, but he's not. He's not like yeah. a great neon. No. Um I don't think that they're the ISO team, to be honest. Mm-mm. I don't think they're really an ISO team, so I don't really know yeah, it would probably have have to be a neon, I guess. It wouldn't shock me if they Clove. They'll probably play some clove. You but... think they'll play some clove? Mm, I'm I'm not sure. Yeah, they might do. I think that, yeah. It depends. Like if they want Angel to play Clove, that would make sense, but I don't think Shao would want to play clove i feel like this team has kind of lost the plot as to like being ahead of the meta i think they were ahead of the meta in the past and they haven't really figured out how to be ahead of the meta at the moment so i don't yeah well we'll see we will see so that's the mea uh EMEA quite it's quite an interesting like you know it's kind of a bit wide open uh, a lot of like influx right now a lot of teams so now let's get on to america's Amer- ah, america Americas. Let's talk about. It. We got some teams to talk about here. Quite, uh, quite a few changes going on in America. Talking about teams in flux. Let's start with uh, Aspas. He's apparently stuck in Shanghai. Not anymore. Or, he's back. Not he's, anymore. He's back. He's back. He's back. But he was stuck in Shanghai, and so he probably hasn't really been practicing much with Leviathan. Did you see the Le- rumor that Dicey was practicing with Lev? Yes. Yes, I did. And in general, I want to just ask you. Quick question on Leviathan. Uh, are they, where are they in the process of implosion? 
this might be too soon and a little bit too dark, but they're like <laughs> the last couple of transmissions from the Titanic sub where they like <laughs> they knew there was a problem, but they hadn't lost contact yet. God, that is that it's too recent. You could have just said the Titanic. You know, you could have just said like you can see the iceberg, you know. Because that's like no one cares because you know that was a long time ago. Well, but we're, we're recent. deep enough you in the episode now with it. where it's not demonetized. Yeah. Probably, okay. You know? Uh, okay, so pretty bad. Pretty bad. You think that they are well on the way to implosion? I think that, I think Ospos is going back to lab, and he's going to reform the, whether it's this year or <laughs> next year. It won't year. be this year. It's not going to be fucking this year, is it? I think he's going I back think, to I lab. think, here's what, hit me up. I think that Aspas brings loud to lab. Not a chance. Pancada's back on loud. They're already like basically. Yeah, they leave Pancada. He, he, the Pancada is a tragic story in BC. That's what he'll be known for. The tragic story. But Pancada, he joins loud and then everyone from loud just moves away from Pancada. No, no, no. no. He's okay, the only listen, one left. Listen. And Lever a Brazilian team. Rebranded, if you didn't notice. What? They have a new jersey and it's essentially the Leviathan jersey. They, oh, they, I did see this. They, yeah, they stole Leviathan's flow, and they're about to steal their duos as well. Loud is they're taking everything Leviathan holds dear, and Lev is just gonna fade away into the ashes. Okay, well, I mean, let, fuck Lev. Let's talk about Loud then. <laughs> Pancada is back to Loud. I, I'm assuming that Tuiz is playing Duelist. And Pancada's on smokes. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably gonna be too easy. Uh, yeah, we we we're, we're watching uh, Sadek frantically on his phone, calling Sassy, <laughs> Sassy. We're bring we're running it back, champs, champs twenty two. We're running it back. Leave now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, two is probably going to Duelist. Pancada goes back to Loud. Are they back? What are your stocks? Where are your Loud stocks at right now? Um. Well. They're not starting at a great spot because they have they have two okay. wins, they have two champ points. Woof. They have to have a very what very... happened to the game I love. <laughs> they have to have a very and they have less games to make it up, right? So they they play EG. It'll be Winnable. probably a, a hard fought win for them. Then they play MIBR. They should Winnable. win, and they play Furia, which they should win. Winnable. Hold then, on. Then they play. We're back. Lev, then they play Lev, which oh, they will whether, have imploded which team by Ospos plays for. They will win. <laughs> <laughs> and then they finish up with a hundred thieves. So if they have to beat hundred thieves to make playoffs, that's going to be a pretty tough season. If they win those four games, they're fine. But yeah, I mean, I think I think they're back. I think they're making playoffs at the very least. Okay. Okay. I think okay. I think Pancada is going to be a big a big thing for this team because, I mean, the thing about QCK was that he oh, was a no. he, he was a Leave good player that had an impossible job, mm. right? He had to step mm. in for the hero of Brazil, the best duelist in the world, and it was just impossible. Like no matter what he did, it was never going to go well. And now that that's failed, the expectations are gone. Like, sure, they moved Tui's over, but Tui's, he's their fucking smokes player. What, what are the expectations? Everybody's going to be excited, focused on Pancata, Sadak, less reunion. They're not going to care how the duelist does. They're not going to be talking about, wow, Tui's, he's sure not playing like us, boss. What a bum. It's going to be like, yeah, Pancata's <laughs> owning, right? Well, That's... with your like little <laughs> ass boss is going to come back to loud. Maybe they will. Maybe you are pushing this narrative solo. I mean, I I think I think that the the pressure is kind of going to be off. I think they're going to be having fun. Uh, I think okay. Pancada seems like kind of a vibes guy with the loud boys to some extent. So I I think they're going to be good. Okay, okay. I I mean I I agree. I think the question is too is to Julius. Like I you know I, I I'm sure he can play Julius, but you know I haven't seen it. So uh, yeah, I'm just I'll we'll, we'll see. Yeah, so, Sonic's gonna go the we'll entire opposite direction as the first split. It was it was all set up. It was all just 
Phoenix Breach Explosion only flashes. Oh god, and yeah. Now they're gonna play only it. Sentinels and Smokes. No duelists. <laughs> just Sentinels. And I mean, smokes. that would be good. That's good. That's fine. You got no problem with it. Just win 12 0 on defense and win a pistol. You're fine. Uh okay. Let's talk about another team who's made changes. A team that you know uh, there's a lot of hope around right now, who is starting from a pretty low position, let's say. Can't get any worse, essentially, mm -hmm. for this team. That's NRG. Mm -hmm. FNS and Sam are back. Mm -hmm. Are NRG going to be good? That's the question, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that is the question. Well, just before you go, I will say that, like, I was a bit confused because I did my America's Power Rankings with my uh, Twitch and YouTube chat. And maybe it's because like I did it whilst the Pacific games were on, so maybe there just wasn't many Americans in there. I was kind of shocked. Like people were like, "No, TMV, you need to put like NRG eight. You need to put them like down there." What? Like they people like people in my chat were like, "No, they didn't have." They kept saying like NRG lower, lower, lower. They kept telling me to put them lower. They didn't have faith that this change was actually going to be, you know, making a sizable difference. I mean, America's is pretty competitive. You know, like top to bottom other than maybe a couple teams like it is you know pretty competitive so i could somewhat understand it but i was surprised I'm and maybe apologize it was, you know, just to your a... twitch chat Go, uh, you, you guys are brain dead <laughs> you guys are brain dead this is probably the best change that they could have made out of any players there's basically no better move that this team could have made at this point in the season that's my take Okay, I've, so I've, with I've that, already with explained that said, why several times. Okay, but, 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 with that said, okay, where would you have put NRG on an America's Power Ranking right now? You don't have to do the whole list, but just give me a ballpark figure where you kind of see them shaking out. Third or fourth. Okay. Okay. See, but I thought that they, I, I, where did I put, I think I put them fifth initially, and then the chat bullied me to put crew above them. Nice. I know, crazy, no. crazy, isn't it? <laughs> um, so I'm not too far off, I guess, uh, from where you are. Uh, do you share the concerns, though, about general firepower of the team? Are no. you not that concerned about that? No? no. Or Victor's jet play? No. Not concerned at all? No. There you go. But, uh, the man has spoken, and yet he still put. He spoke. He's speaking right now as if he thinks that they're the best team in the league. But he said third or four. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just not concerned about those things. I think. Okay. I think that they they brought back the player that they needed, which was somebody to have fun, which is Sam, who also happens to be an insanely talented player, very very good at smokes. Which, mm -hmm. I mean, they were having ridiculous role issues to start the season. Like none of their roles were making sense, basically outside of crashies. Um, Victor is going to play full-time duelist. His yep. jet in the past, when they had Ye on the team, they were still putting Victor on jet, and he was owning. He's a good jet. Mm -hmm. Neon is now meta, potentially. Oh! The map pool is changing. Haven is coming back. Energy has always been a good Haven team. They, uh, FNS loves Haven. Um, they have... The best IGL in North America. Um, sorry, Bustio, but I mean, I, I do think FNS is the best IGL in North America. Oh, Sodic's there. Mm, okay, pause. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best IGLs in the world. Let's go with that. <laughs> that that's a better framing of it. Um, I think that there's going to be... It's going to be interesting. Because on one hand, I can see there being no pressure because it's like, oh, there's going to be pressure. There's, there's going to be pressure, though. There's going to be pressure. If they lose a game, Chet is going to be like, you know, he's, he's, his head's going to be on a spike. But do you think, do you think there's going to be pressure on, on SOM and FNS? Because I don't think there will be. No, for those two, no. Yeah. But for everyone else, probably. Yeah. Probably. The the one weird thing that could happen is if Victor has a slow start, people are gonna be Everyone's like, gonna say Demon Why is yeah. Demon One not playing? 
Yes. Right. Even though he doesn't really fit the team as far as the roles go. Yeah. But yeah. Although weirdly, weirdly, the way it's shaping up, it kind of looks like probably what will happen for next year is FNS and Summon Demon One will be there. <laughs> why do you keep saying that? I've heard you say that a couple of times. Why? Why? Is because that... I don't see why. Like to me, like FNS and some. Like you say, there's no pressure on them because if it goes wrong, they're going to be like, well, yeah, we joined halfway through the season and they're going to tell NLG, like, why would you sign us for just a, a like a month? But why do you think you know, it doesn't make any sense? Fl- because they would have they would have released him. Why is he on the bench? Uh, Because maybe he has a good agent and has like a crazy severance clause. Yeah, maybe. But people are going to say play Demo. The pressure is just going to be there to say play Demo. I can see Demon like you say to G two next year. To be honest, oh okay, well but... save it for the <laughs> save it for October, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I <don't laughs> when we're talking yeah, about I, that, I can I I see some validity. I don't know. I I feel fairly comfortable with energy. It's it it's okay. it's weird to say that, but I I feel like Ethan is going to be really good in the second half because he's no longer who do they play in the first game? He's no longer going to have to think about IGLing. They don't even play in. Oh yeah, they do. They oh, they play Sentinels. Sen- Ooh, oh banger. no, <laughs> banger! Oh, no. Actually, their schedule is crazy. Sentinels, G two, Crew, and Cloud Nine. It's basically just firepower. Uh, a oh, team that got no. third. Bruh. Firepower, firepower. Bro, what are you talking about? That cook? What do you mean? I don't, I don't think so. It's I, think gonna, I think they're gonna win. My six is looking good. I think they're going to win at least three of those games. I won't say who. Really? I think they'll, I think they'll win. Well, we'll get to the Sen game. We'll see if you're picking that one. Because if you pick Sen, then we know you made three. <laughs> um, okay, speaking of Sen, let's, let's talk about them as well. Come on, I said this for NRG. Where would you put Sen in your, in your mystical power ranking? Uh, I'd probably still put them number one. You'd put them one? Okay. I think so. Okay. I think so. So you're 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 all in. There's no like no concerns really about Sen. You think that you're on the train of like they'll just benefit from not having gone to Shanghai. They need the rest. They'll be yeah. A- amazing. Yeah, I I just don't think this team like understood what it was gonna be like to be a pro team this year. Because like if <laughs> if you look at their players, like they don't have any experience. I mean, sure they, they like they do with like Saucy. Like, that's gonna sound like really weird. They don't have any experience, but like realistically, I mean, sure, Zelsus has been around forever, but he's been to one international tournament before this one, right? He was playing in like kind of like random tier two stacks, etc. Tens obviously has quite a bit of experience, but he's he hasn't been like at the top for a long time. He's never shown like great endurance as a player. This dude's always sick, has to take lots of breaks, that type of stuff. Saucy obviously had like the loud run, but it was a while ago. John Cutie coming up from tier two doesn't really understand what it's like, how much you have to grind, that type of thing. Zekin, obviously, he's been the promised one, but again, has never like been that top guy with all the pressure that comes with that. I mean, I thought they were just like they were so good as a team at the first tournament. And then like I just I just think that they like they just like didn't understand like how hard they actually had to work. Not not that they were lazy, but they just it was it was just like overwhelming to just be, you know, they do more content than anybody else in the scene. Like they have more fan like demands. There's more pressure on them. I think that it was probably good that they lost, got to reset, and I think like I mean maybe they won't end up number one, but I would say I'm the most confident that this team will make champs out of all the teams in America's. Yeah, I think that I think that's totally fair. Um especially the point about champs because they have a big points advantage as well. But uh yeah, I, I think it would be and it that Sen NRG game is such like it's a so great good. what a great such a great episode. like first game to have. Yeah. You know, with FNS coming back, you know Holy it's going to be a lot shit. of trash talk. It could get honestly the actual gameplay could get very muddy because it's like such a spectacle. Yeah. You know, that it might end up being like, you know, very brawly and, you know, Is full of bravado and stuff. You know, America's are starting on the new patch. Starting on new patch. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I don't think EMEA is, but I think I saw a thing about America starting on 8.11. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be, and that's it's just such a banger game straight off the rip. Uh, Sends other games, by the way, if you're wondering, they play Crew and Cloud9. 
uh, the week after that. Um, and then they actually get a break week uh, before they finish with G2. So again, not an e everyone in that group, you know, it, it, it's a good group. Like everyone has tough games because that group has to play itself. Uh, so it's not going to be like a cakewalk for Sen. I think they probably will lose at some point, probably during this split. Um, but also, the yeah. worst map out of the pool. That's true as well. Breeze, yeah, Breeze gone. Breeze gone. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yep. that's that's a big help. And I remember during the off season they were pretty good at Haven. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, this it, things are looking good for Sen right now. The thing is though, like, you know, if NRG do just like outplay them, you know, or if FNS just has a crazy game. You know, it comes out and they come out and they're cooking, you know, on the new patch and stuff like that. NRG and Sen get like outplayed. That will be that will be an interesting uh, thing to see how the Sen fans react, you know, and how the team reacts to that. I don't think the team would panic, but the fans might. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The they fans will. might. They will 100%. <laughs> yes. Uh, Okay, I mean, I mean, you kind of answered. I, I'm, I mean, I put this question here because I thought it was an interesting question of who is the best America's team. Because I do think it's an interesting debate. That, you know, some people, you know, like if you think about the arguments you could make, some delusional FNS fans would probably say NRG. Yeah. You know, uh, you said Sentinels. Yeah. But I think there is arguments to be made, of course, for G2 finished the first in Master Shanghai of the America's team, so they've got to be first. Some yep. people would say 100 Thieves are kind of, you know most recently have shown perhaps the highest peak performance mm -hmm. of an America's team. So I think it is an interesting debate. You went with Sentinels. I think in my power rankings, I went with 100 Thieves. Hmm. Uh, okay. But I mean, I'm not adv averse to going to Sentinels either. I just kind of, like, to be honest, if Send beat NRG, I'd probably put them one uh, in a power ranking straight away and, and have, and no matter what 100 Thieves did, I'd probably feel just like, I just need to see it. You know, I just want to see like, you know, that they have like, because yeah. everyone is kind of like, you know, oh, they'll be so much better after this break and they can, you know, change all their strats and change everything. Like, I just need to, you know, first see it, but it's fine if you think that, you know. Yeah, I mean, I guess it is worth also it. noting that they're losing their best map too, right? Split is going out. Yeah. And, and Breeze is going out. But I think, I think the fact, I, I think that Bind, Sunset, and Lotus, and then maybe Icebox are the most important maps in the pool right now and just because we don't really know like about haven i think haven will probably rapidly become one of the most played maps just because everybody loves that yep. map and everybody has like a ton of stuff from it from the past because they didn't make people just love three it. site maps because lotus is like the most picked map yeah and haven was as is i think is the most like when it was in the pool was the most picked map as well so yeah we just love three sites <laughs> but i mean because like ascent has really kind of fallen out of of favor because it, yeah, everybody feels like it. it's such a like a coin flip because everybody's yeah. playing the same comp. So I think I think the map will really, really does revolve around Lotus Sunset as as number one and two. And then a third one could either be like split or bind, usually, or sometimes a team will really like Icebox. Um and, and Sentinels have a pretty good bind. They've got a good sunset, they've got a good lotus. Their icebox is not great, but I think they're still trying to figure out like what comp to play. And then their ascent has never been great, but I don't know. I, I feel like their map pool is probably better than most of the other teams. And I'm telling you right now on Icebox, Tens is going to play Clove. Yeah, I can see that. 100%. It's going to happen. 100%. I can see that. Uh, now, I, I added this question in here because this I had to, when I was doing my power rankings, I really, really had to debate about this question. Mm hmm which is who is the ninth best team in America? So you might be like, why the hell have you picked ninth out? Because <laughs> the reason I've picked ninth out is because everyone pretty much can agree that Fiorio and MIBR are 10 and 11 in some order. Yes. But when you get to nine, <laughs> it, it actually becomes, I think, a really difficult argument to make for a lot of teams. And I don't know if you saw what my power ranking ended up being. Mm -mm. Um, guess who I put nine? I would imagine you either put EG or Cloud9. See, that's what most people in the chat said as well. And I put them seven and eight. Okay. I put Leviathan at nine. Okay. That, that was my <laughs> third one that I was thinking it might be. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> because I do think that, like, you look at the rest of the teams and, like, you can make a case that, well, Cloud9, they finished like five and one or whatever, mm. you know, and so did Crew in split one. 
yeah, they didn't, you know, make it in the playoffs or whatever. You know, they lost to G2, who, as we saw, you know, were perhaps a bit better than everyone thought. Yeah. Right. The the G2 were actually pretty good. So you could make a case that, okay, they just lost to, you know, a, an actually good team. Right. And so you don't want to put like G2 in ninth, of course. But then you've got like Lev, you know, EG are an interesting one, but I think most people probably feel like EG are on a rise. You know, that like yeah. towards the end of the season, they 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 started to come on a rise and maybe with more time, as we saw with EG last year, you know, as the season progressed, they'll just get better. Maybe that's a little bit of hopium, but I think, you know, it's a hopium that a lot of people have, I think, for EG. And then you're looking at like, you know, Sentinels, NRG, G2, 100 Thieves, Loud, like, you know, it's like, who? I'm not going to put any of them teams in ninth. So I ended up settling on Leviathan just because... The sub. The Logitech controller and the sub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, so yeah, they. So who would you put ninth though? Quickly. Who would you uh, put ninth? I think I'd probably put. I think I'd probably put. Cloud nine. Well, <laughs> see, it feels the awesome, is, though, doesn't it? The thing is, it's not it's not possible for them to finish ninth because of their yeah. record in split one. But just in terms of a power, power ranking, ranking like, I would you know. probably put Cloud Nine or EG. Maybe, maybe EG. Like as, as much as I'm a Potter stan, like a hundred percent Potter stan, I just don't think that the players are quite there, and I just I think okay. it's, it's too much for them to. But I could be wrong. Okay, could be wrong. I I also listen. I could be super wrong about energy. And this this could be a massive implosion for this team as well. Let's be honest. Like it really yeah, could, could be. it really could be, and they could end up being terrible. Could be could be. Uh let's let's go to our pick'ems then. Uh and we can we can pick about pick some of these games and talk about some of these teams if we want to as we go. Oh man, we start with MIBR versus, versus Leviathan. <laughs> now MIBR apparently, I don't know if you saw that Fraud was saying that Fraud might have to play <laughs> in this game. <laughs> Uh, they've had visa issues at MIBR. They've made a lot of changes, so those newer players. Yeah, Brazil's I, I'm getting guessing... fucked this year in general by visas. Yeah, kind of... uh, this one I think is more obviously the Brazilian visas take some time, and obviously because they've made changes, I'm gonna guess you know they made obviously the applications for their old players you know a while ago. Right. But of course they've made changes, so I've had to make new applications for those players after confirming that those are the players that they want, and so those haven't come through in time. And so it might not be uh, might not be a great situation for them here. So just because of that, I guess you have to pick Lev. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Lev, if especially here's the thing. Part of me wants to pick MIBR just because it's like Rod. He in the interview that I did with him, he was talking about how he like really kind of like connected with Ospos and like understands him as a player. He's like Ospos is like me when I was younger and and CS one point three one point six. Like I can, I understand how he plays. I understand how he thinks. Maybe he can counter him, but realistically, Leviathan should be able to like sleepwalk through this game, even if they are like not a very good team overall. So, although you know, maybe the players that MIBR have picked up, you know, can aim. You know, if a couple of them are there and they can aim, you know, if, if they're all of them are there and they can aim, then who knows? You know, yeah, who I'm knows? Picking Lev. Yeah. Okay. The big game. The big one. Sentinels versus NRG. Yep. What are you what are you going for? I think it's gonna be a grinder. I think it's gonna be real close. I'm gonna take Sentinels, but I don't feel super confident about it. Oh okay, Sten City, you got the curse of death because I'm picking Sentinels as well. Alright. And I'm feeling more confident, I would okay. say. I, I I'm feeling I'm feeling good for Sen overall. But cool. But I it, it wouldn't shock me if NRG won. And it would be a great yeah, man. I mean, if this game goes close, map three, what a game that's going to be. Uh, okay, next game shouldn't need too much discussion. Fury versus 100 Thieves. 100 Thieves. I'm going to go famous. 100 Thieves. Yeah. Next game, Loud versus EG, the revamped Loud, your boys against EG. What say ye? I'm just going to take Loud on Firepower alone, I think. I just think, like, I'm going to go EG. That's cool. 
That's cool. He yeah. says, no reaction. Doesn't care. No. And then finally, you're wrong. We'll see. <laughs> G2 versus Cloud9. Interesting one, because G2, you know, haven't had much time coming off uh, Shanghai against uh, a Cloud9. Emmy used to coach G2. Oxy used to yes. play for G2. Yes, revenge game. Very different team. Yeah, very different team. I mean, I just don't know what to think about Cloud9, honestly. I just really don't. I don't have an idea of what this team is. Like, we, we saw lots of flashes of brilliance. We saw them kind of maybe catch some of the teams off early because, like, it, it, it was kind of what I thought was going to happen, which is that, I mean, Cloud9 started playing together early. They came out hot. They won a bunch of games early. They started to kind of fall off a little bit. They didn't fall off as much as maybe might have been expected, but I guess despite their good record, my overall take on them at the end of split one was like, this team is kind of okay. I don't know what, how did you feel about Cloud9? Yeah, I, I just think that they, they're in that okay realm. Like, I, I think they just, they, they obviously have Oxy, and every so often he'll just go crazy and like he'll just win a map on his own sometimes. Um, and and like the rest of it is just kind of like, you know, they they don't do anything like. They're never like going like crazy. Like, what are they doing? They're a bit of a brawly, muddier team. Like, yeah, but you know, they're just like. They're just fine, you know. Yeah. They're just fine, and and maybe they've improved. Obviously, this is the thing, right? Who knows how much these teams have improved in the time they've had off? Who knows what they've done with their time off? I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, my thing for this game is, I think there's a possibility that G two, with the experience they got from Shanghai, have had a big level up. Yeah. I think that there's a real chance that G two are actually like, like really good now. Yeah. Like that they that the maybe they needed that kind of run just to like prove to themselves that like oh shit we're good. Yeah. <laughs> like oh we can actually fucking do this. Right? Like we can do this guys. Um yeah, they come back they're, and they're scrimming these free agent North American teams in practice. Yeah, and they're like oh my god, terrible. these guys are like, Yeah, <laughs> like like they're just yeah, it wouldn't shock me if yeah, yeah, they're just like in that zone of like man, these guys are shit. Like they've just like <laughs> Like, you know, they just come back into, like, where where they left off, kind of. Right. Obviously, they didn't leave in, like, a great spot. They kind of, you know, in the last couple of games kind of got destroyed a bit. But even so, just the experience of playing at that level with that kind of pressure that this kind of team, like, you know, they'll come back to this and they'll be, you know, just, just ready for it, basically, and just in a good in a good headspace. It could go the other way where, you know, they had exited that tournament that's the thing that when you finish third, you don't have that same. If they had finished second, you know, it's like, oh, we're so close. But when you finish third, it's like, you know, I don't feel like you don't. It's like they say, like, you know, bronze, bronze medal winners in the Olympics, you know, are happier than silver medal winners in mm -hmm. the Olympics. Yeah. Because you don't have that same, like, oh, I just missed out. Right. I made the, podium, I think the same thing, but it wasn't like the failure yeah. of a lifetime, right? Yeah. I feel like the same thing will happen for G2, where it's not like, it's not in your head, like, oh, we should have won. You know, we won round away from winning. You weren't. <laughs> you know, yeah. you you just weren't. So, yeah, I, I I'm I, I could see a strong G two revival coming in, coming in big. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna pick them. Um, I could see Cloud Nine winning this game because maybe maybe G two is, is fatigued from the thing, but that America starting a little bit later probably helps them quite a bit. Uh, so yeah, yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna take G two. Okay, and then this is going to be unless interesting. Shazam, unless Shazam is now playing for Cloud9, as some rumors have <laughs> suggested. Well, that would be interesting. And I don't. How would that work? Would that mean the vanity isn't playing? Yeah, I, there's some rumors. Apparently, on stream, he said that he was going to be playing in VCT Americas. Uh, and some people were saying, oh, he's going to Cloud9. Maybe he's going to MIBR. Who the fuck knows? Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Okay, finally. Our America's champs predictions. Yep. Do you want to go first? Sure. Give me Sentinels. I too will say Sentinels. Sweet. Next. Give me a hundred thieves. Okay. Okay. I will also say a hundred thieves, but I will caveat this. I think a hundred thieves will go through on points. Okay. 
Interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, Next. Okay. Team three. This is where it gets interesting. Give me energy. He's taking NRG. Okay. Okay, makes sense. I'm going to say G2. Okay. Last team. Last team. G2. No South American teams make it to champs. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> My last team. And so... then Ospos goes back to loud for the <laughs> Brazilian revival next year. So I also have no South American teams going to champs. Okay. Because I've picked EG! You're on EG! so many drugs, dude. There's no EG way. are going to champs. Here's EG. why EG are going to champs. Are you ready? Oh, my God. I'm thinking of that the Jagama versus Demon 1. Oh, what a wonderful play that was. The, the airplane Bucky into dipping his former teammate. The greatest best play the I might have ever seen, ever. Yes. The best play of the year. EG. For that very man you just spoke. Josh. Jogamo raided me and said, I'll make it to champs. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> so there you go. I'm taking him at his word. EG. All right. I mean, I love it. I, I would be happy to see them go. Yeah. I'd be very happy to see them go. So cool. There you go. That's Rip a podcast, I South think. South America. <laughs> Rip, Rip South, South America. America. Unlucky. Don't worry. Aspas will go back to loud and everything will be good. Okay. You're trying to end the podcast. No words for China. We're just ignoring the region. Shall we just do quick champ spreads for China if you want as well? <laughs> uh, okay. First of all, I, all I'm going to say, Billy Billy might be pretty good now. I think the yes. changes they made were good. I think they're going to be pretty yes. good. Wolves, not so much. Wolves are Holy bad. Fuck. They are a bad team. Holy fucking shit. <laughs> they are a bad team. Holy shit, they're bad. My Wolves dream, it's over. It's fucking over. Yeah, let's do champs for China. Shit. We don't have to go over the games. I know nobody watches the Chinese part anyway. I look at the retention graph when it goes to China. Boom. Okay. <laughs> Quick spreads then. Let's go. FPX. Uh, EDG. EDG. FPX. <laughs> um, Billy Billy. I'm also going to say Billy Billy Gaming. And I'm going to say DRG. Wow. Okay. I'm taking Trace. I don't yeah. know if you saw the press conference where Bustio said that Trace had been absolutely slamming them in scrims while they were over there. He said Trace or the Trace. Really? Yeah. He said they're the next up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I did not see that. Yeah. Anyway, I'll still go with DRG. I'll okay. say that they're just chokers. Okay. Um, is that enough of a podcast for you? That's enough of a podcast. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next week. Make sure you go watch TMV on Plat Chat as well tomorrow. He's a traitor, but we support him. I'll anyway. be making many of the same points. Yep. Make them better <laughs> next time. I'll try. Goodbye. I'll try. Goodbye.